On the rocky coast of West Cork lies a small fishing village, and once a year the local community turns it into something quite extraordinary. The Corona Fastnet Short Film Festival in Skull has been running for the last three years and has gained a considerable reputation both here and abroad. Besides film screenings, it also features readings and workshops with some of the luminaries of the film world, such as Jerry Stembridge, Pat McCabe, Steve Coogan and Greg Dyke. One of the main movers and shakers behind the festival is the most compact you're likely to meet. At only 4 foot 3, Pauline Cotter has formidable energy and drive, not only running the festival, but also a youth centre for the community. It's an amazing thing when I see children that see me for the first time. I will always know the child that is nurtured well at home and that has an open relationship with the parents and they can chat and whatnot. I will also know the child that is shielded and not spoken to and not treated as a young child because the child that is treated openly will know what I am, will know that that's a dwarf. It's okay, she's a dwarf. Say it and don't be afraid of it. But I think those adults that are intimidated by me would not have released that sort of sense of ease with their children. And that child will, you will get children saying, hi mom, look, look, geez, there's a dwarf. And then you'll see the mother go, stop that. You know, over the head, rubbish. She's right, I am a dwarf. And I went to the child and I said, you were right, I'm sorry, your mother is wrong. You know, and that child and I are still pals today. Where did the idea for a film festival in a small fishing village without a cinema come from? The reason I wanted actually to concentrate on the short film festival was because a lot of the children that I've been dealing with over the years, and they've, they've now got the new cameras, they all have them, they have the computers, the, the iPhones and whatnot, and they were coming in and they could show you what they could do with them. And I said to them, you should, you should make a movie. You know, you should actually do, make one. And then they would come in with, make one, put it on the computer and show it to me. And I'd say, that was really brilliant. Put music to it. And I thought, this place needs something. Skull needs something. And I thought, well, how hilarious would it be with no cinema to do a short movie festival? It was only natural that Pauline should want to introduce me to the rest of the team. But what I wasn't expecting was a hair-raising ride over the mountains in her little red sports car. We were on our way to meet Maurice Roycroft and his Italian wife Maria, both of whom devote huge amounts of their time to the festival. Maurice himself is no stranger to film, having written music for such major motion pictures as In the Name of the Father, The Boxer, In America, and Romeo and Juliet. Although Maurice is six foot five, he and Pauline really do see eye to eye when it comes to running the festival. I asked him how it grew from an idea to its present incarnation. Um, I think where it really started was there was, a, and still is, a Skull Arts Week, um, which happens every year. And um, Helen Wells, who's on the committee of the film festival, and Pauline Cotter um, were um, uh, imagining one year, I think it was around 2007, they, they introduced an element in the Skull Arts Week of um, people related to film, uh, talking about their favourite films. It just gradually grew out of the notion that, you know, they had brought this idea into their Arts Week and surely film in itself deserved, um, um, you know, a platform all of its own, uh, particularly given the location that we're in. West Cork is like a magnet for people of all sorts, uh, of artistic intonations, whether they're crafts people working in art, um, working in film, working in music. And it's like this great melting pot of, uh, of ideas. I'm sure th the same thing happens in cities, but um, it just seems somehow more, more focused down here. You know? For my money, it's the one area that you're more likely to get young filmmakers, uh, young, unfettered, creative uh, people making films without any commercial constraints. And that's really important to us, you know. What they're doing is they're basically, before there's any 
great uh, pressure put on them, you know, to actually, although you do have to have, uh, you know, quite a discipline to make a film of, that, of the calibre that might win a festival like this, um, it's still wide open to virtually anybody with any completely off the wall idea and sometimes they are the best ones, the ones that are just followed through like a golden thread and then they basically arrive at this point where they express something. And uh, it's uh, something that the more I've watched and the more I've actually got involved in the, the judging of it, um, the more it excites me, you know, because uh, every year you just see some incredible ideas coming through the post box, which is a wonderful thing, isn't it? What is really striking about Skull during the festival is the way the village comes alive with colour. We decided to festoon it and uh, so we got a, a whole lot of people having a bit of fun in a number of afternoon and uh, just cut a lot of uh, what we call lemon peel out of this yellow material, just uh, added film stock to it. I think we all like uh, the result of actually ga gathering together and achieving something that he wouldn't achieve as an individual. But what about the indigenous population of Skull? How do they feel about their village turning into such an intense media event? I think they've seen a lot of people coming in here from outside, having a lot of great ideas and then deflating gradually, you know. So they tend to be a bit cautious. They wait and see whether it lasts, you know. And <laughs> <laughs> but if they start seeing that you're serious, you know, it's not just, you know, this kind of doughy-eyed sort of uh, kind of uh, idealism and it's kind of well-rooted and people really mean well, then they actually really, you know, support you.